Hello Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to show you how to make this really cute fun fold birthday card. I call that a Z fold card and it's pretty simple and basic. We're going to talk about some coloring and show you how to do that. We're going to do a little bit of um, heat embossing and we're going to use this beautiful paper that is available now through um, the end of April. This is the paper that uh, some of the other colors in this paper, isn't this just gorgeous? Just, just love it. This is uh, some blues and greens and purples and oranges and yellows. Look at that, isn't that lovely? And then here's the other side. So this is the Dandy Designs January through February Celebration Host Paper. So it's available only through the end of February and it is available with an order of $150 or more. You don't actually have to actually host a party to get this paper, but if your order is over $150, then don't miss this because it is really beautiful and you get 48 sheets. And these are all the colors, balmy blue, calypso coral, fresh freesia, granny apple green, mango melody, and petal pink. Just love it, I've, had, I've done lots of fun things with this paper. So thank you for joining me. My name is Linda Edwards. I'm with Crafty Here in Designs. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. These are the measurements for the card that I'm gonna show you today. I will also post these measurements in the description of the video. But if you wanna just take a quick screenshot um, or take a photo of those measurements, feel free to do that now. This is the Full of Love stamp set, and this is the image that we're gonna use from this stamp set. We're gonna use this image, and we're gonna use the Hello There as well. This is in the annual catalog, and this one will be available for a while yet. The annual catalog runs through the end of April. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll do, let's see, I'm gonna bring in my kit. So if you ordered this, um, card kit. This is my create at home card class. If you ordered it, this is the kit that will come with your, um, with all of your cards, with your order. And this of course is the video to help you put together your cards. So what you'll have, um, is you'll have a, a card base. It is fresh freesia is the color and it is cut at eight and a half by five and a half. Turn it this way. It is scored at two and an eighth and four and a quarter. So it's scored in half, and then there's another half to it. Set that aside. And then you will also have another piece of fresh freesia, and this is cut at four and an eighth by two and three quarters. And then you'll have a couple of pieces of basic white, and you'll notice one of them has a little corner cut off of it. This is the one you're gonna use for stamping, and it's about, um, three and seven eighths by two and five eighths. This is actually larger because you're gonna stamp on it and then you're gonna cut it with the rectangle deckled die. If you don't have that die, the final size for that card is what's listed here, three and seven eighths by two and five eighths. And that is so that it layers on that piece. And then you will also have a piece, this is for the inside and it is cut at four and three eighths by three and an eighth inch. So remember, the one you're gonna cut with the die is got the little corner cut off of it so that you don't don't mix them up and then you'll have a piece of basic black that's this little scrap for your sentiment we're gonna heat emboss on that and then you'll have several pieces of designer series paper now you can use either side of the paper for your card you decide you see on this card I went ahead and used this side this piece is cut at five and a quarter by four and then you have two pieces that are cut at five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. You see they're the same size. And again, you can use either side on that. And then you'll have another piece. It could be, it's gonna be one of two of these designs. This is for your envelope. This piece is actually cut at six inches by two and a quarter inches. And that is gonna go right here on your envelope like that. So set that aside and let's go ahead and get started. So 
Usually the first thing I like to do is to go ahead and begin with our stamping. And what I want you to do is bring the piece that's got the corner edge cut off of it. I'm gonna move this out of my way. And we are gonna use the image with Memento ink because it's Memento Black because we are going to be coloring our image with the Stampin' Blends. The Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers. So the, the ink that you want to use with it is the Memento ink. Now you just need to center this because you are going to be cutting it out with that rectangle deckled die. So go ahead and stamp your image. And the reason I want you to do that first is because I want to make sure that that Memento ink is good and dry before we start coloring. So I'm gonna set that aside. And actually I did go ahead and cut, um, stamp it earlier so that I knew it would be good and dry. So I'm gonna bring in my stamped image from earlier because I know that's been sitting there for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. But now we're gonna go ahead and color and cut the inside. Um, so there's a small image here, a little flower image, and I'm gonna also use Memento for that. And you'll see, we're gonna put that on the inside. So I'm gonna just do it that way. Okay, and again, I want that to sit and dry. And then my happy birthday. So the happy birthday is actually from the very best occasions stamp set. Oh, see, I like to look at it and see whether you've got a good crisp image or not. There we go. There's a happy birthday. Okay. The um, very best occasions is a great stamp set. It's got happy birthday, thinking of you, grateful, comfort and love, um, something for every occasion. They had some it was actually in our holiday catalog and it has carried over, so it is still available. I like this one a lot. The images are, it's a cling stamp, so it gives you good crisp images. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside and let those dry and uh, before I start the coloring. So let's go ahead and bring in our, our card base so that we can put our paper on it. So here you can see that. I'll leave that there so you can kind of see it, what we're doing. So you're gonna card, uh, you're gonna fold it in half first. I usually put the valley on the outside. However, what's gonna happen is this is a Z fold. So it's gonna go back and forth, so it doesn't really matter. But you wanna give it a good burnish because I'll tell you, this card likes to pop open. It doesn't like to stay closed. So burnish it really well so that it'll stay closed for you. And then go ahead and take your inside layer. This is the largest piece of designer series paper that you have. And you're gonna put that on the inside of your card. You can use either one. Maybe I'll go ahead and use this one since I used the other side on the last uh, card, just for something different. There we go. All right. This is a great fun fold. Um, Keep it in mind, you can use so many different stamp sets and papers for it. It's a wonderful way to kind of showcase the different papers. So let's see, should I do a different one? Yeah, I think I like, I like having the, I like these two better. So I'm gonna do the same. Even though I changed up the base, I'm gonna do this the same. So again, my two small pieces, I'm just putting it on each panel. And as you can see, they're all on the same side. So you've got your card base open flat and you just go ahead and put these on like that. And I'm not gonna add the inside layer until I finish coloring it. So let's set that aside. And um, let's go ahead and color our pieces. So I am gonna bring in some scrap because the, um, the blending um, brushes, or not the blending, excuse me, the, the um, Stampin' Blends do go through the back of the, um, of the paper. So I wanna make sure that I've got something to protect my, 
my work surface. So I've got two colors, um, excuse me, two of each color. I've got a light and a dark. And you can see, so the colors that I have, I'm gonna start with the green. This is the granny apple green. I've got a light and a dark, and that's gonna be my leaf. So I'm gonna do both leaves at the same time. I like to start with the um, darker color and just kind of run through the, um, the shadows. Wherever there would be a shadow is where I'm gonna do a dark color. So you see how, if you look at how layered this would be, the shadows would be kind of at the base of these leaves. And then I turn my uh, paper to, you know, get it, make it easier for me to get the color that I want. So that was the dark. And then I'm gonna come in with the light. And again, I'm using the, the fine point because these are small images. And I'm going over the dark image and blending it into the rest of the white. So right there. And they do tend to, um, bleed just a little bit, I guess. So I, I don't, I don't go um, too close to the black edge, even though it, um, it's not going to necessarily um, blend with the black. It's just that sometimes it goes outside of the lines. And I want this to all, this color to stay inside the lines. So that's why I'm kind of trying, trying to stay away from the outline of the black ink. And then, you know, I'm really, it's pretty straightforward. These images are kind of bold, which is, which I really like. There we go. So that's, that's the green. So I'll set that aside. And then I think I'm going to come in with the purple. So I've got uh, fresh freesia, dark and light fresh freesia. And once again, I'm going to start with the dark and I'm going to do the outline and the base. And I'm leaving this center petal, I'm leaving it because I want that to be a light color. So I'm doing these two flowers. Um, we'll have a little bit of dark kind of in here where the petals would be overlapping. And then I'm gonna just do the center, not, not the, the circle in the center, but kind of the center of each leaf. So where Stampin' Up! has shown us where those lines are, that's what I'm gonna use to um, do my shading. And now I'm gonna bring in the light and go over the dark and the light to blend the two together. So pretty straightforward. I do love coloring and these blends are really so easy to work with. They give you a lot of, they're very forgiving, they're very smooth. When you're using the pen end, you can press a little bit harder, but I would be gentle, especially when you use the brush end, because I'll tell you, that brush end gets um, gets frayed very easily. You need to treat it like um, a, a paint brush, very, very light touch with that brush end. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, here we go. So that's all of the purple, and you can see I did those two flowers and that center one. And then I'm gonna come in with the Calypso Coral. Again, the dark and the light and do the same thing. So here, here, this Calypso Coral is kind of a deep, deep color, but it's, um, but I just think it's really pretty. And I'm just gonna do a little bit at the base of these. These flowers are so small that I'm not really worried too much about them. And then this is, the Calypso Coral, the light, this one. <laughs> I'm having a hard time opening this one. So I knew I was gonna have trouble with it. And this is what I wanted to show you. So see what happened? It actually came out because I cracked, I think I dropped it and this part is cracked. But I wanted to show you that because I'm gonna show you what to do. So I have a needle nose pliers. I'm gonna put that in here because these two pieces are stuck together. So if that ever happens to you, you can get it to come out. And then just put it back, press it in. 
like I said, mine is cracked a little bit, so that's why it, it comes apart. But it's good to go. And again, I thought, well, I, obviously I'll probably need to go ahead and order some new ones. But I wanted you to see, you know, what, what you can do if that happens to you. All right, there we go. And just finish those up. And it's still working. I mean, I still have plenty of color coming out of it. So I feel like, you know, I mean, they don't last forever, but they do pretty well. All right, so that's that one. And I'm, I'm hesitant to, you know, I suppose I could just not push it down all the way, but I'm afraid it'll dry out if I do that, so. Okay, so now we're gonna use, this I'm gonna use the brush end now. You see there's the brush end because I'm gonna do the um, envelope. And I'm just kind of coming in the front of the envelope, I'm just going along the edges. And then I'm gonna blend it to the center. So, there you go. And a little bit kind of under where the flowers are kind of, and the leaves are overlapping the envelope, you know, like if, as if it's got a little shadow. Um, and I think I'll do just a little bit along there as well. And then I just come in with the uh, light. This is, I don't think I told you, this is the pale papaya, which is just a wonderful color. So this pale papaya is, um, this color is gonna be retiring soon. So uh, if you like these, the fresh freesia and the pale papaya, go ahead and make sure that you've got the, you've got it ordered because um, these colors only last two years. This is the end of the second year for the pale papaya and the fresh freesia. So um, make sure you don't get st stuck without it. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm coming in and you see that I'm doing the center, the inside of the envelope, and I'm not doing any shading on this. I want this a really light color as if the inside of the envelope is just a little bit lighter than the outside. Primarily because I don't want to hide, I don't, you know, the um, the flowers that are popping out of it. I want them to just have a little bit of color so you can see it's an envelope. It's, you know, the back of the envelope, um, but I want it lighter. There we go. And, oh, I forgot. I wanted to do one more of the dark right here in the center. Um, and that is the um, the fresh freesia, the dark fresh freesia. Although now I'm looking at that going, maybe I need to do that as a calypso coral. What do you think? Let's try it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I like that. All right, so now let me move those off to the side. Oh, I forgot to do my little flower here. Sorry about that. So let me do my a little calypso coral in here. And outside of it and then I'll have to do I think maybe I'll do purple in that one so bring in that purple in the center there we go okay now we're ready so move those aside um, I'll need that in a minute, but for now, let's um, go ahead and bring in the uh, cut and emboss machine because we are going to die cut this. Now, as I said, if you don't have a rectangle die, just cut it on your trimmer and actually just, I would cut your piece um, as you want it and then go ahead and, um, myself some room so just just cut it with your uh, with your trimmer so got our sandwich here our basic sandwich let's see if I can get that in the camera now one tip I have for you when you're cutting out this any die that's got a long flat edge is you tilt it a little bit you don't want to run this through parallel to the um, cutting blades or to the um, rollers so, let's see. Um, sometimes you need to tape it. We'll see if I can do this and keep it straight. 
without adhering it down at all. Just gently, there we go, just gently putting it down there. Okay, here we go, run it through. And done. Okay, put that aside. And there we go. So, Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to make our, so these two are gonna go together, but don't don't adhere them yet. And we need to um, meet our, our sentiment, to our sentiment. So we are gonna heat emboss this image. So I'm gonna bring in something to protect my work surface. And I have the hello there is the, um, uh, stamp that I want to use and I'm bringing in the Versamark ink you can see I got, got some green ink in there but it doesn't seem to be a problem so I'm just watching to make sure I've got it good and moist and I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to layer it down to the bottom because I'm going to want it to be a really thin image oh you know what I forgot to do yep Okay, so this is such an easy thing to do. I forgot to go ahead and um, put the um, talcum powder, my embossing buddy, on my um, black piece of paper. So what happens is if you don't use the embossing buddy on it, let me see, not a big deal. I'm going to, so the, the Versamark is on there, but I'm kind of just drying it off on the side. And I'm gonna use the opposite side of the paper, right? Every paper has two sides. I'm gonna bring in the embossing buddy. It's just got some talcum powder, some um, cornstarch, and it will um, make sure that there are no um, um, strays. So um, it's static, it, de it takes away the static. And it's okay, you'll see, I'll show you how to clean it up even though it's got that white stuff on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and Stamp it again, very gently. Okay, and you can even see there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my powder. And I do have, I like to use these coffee filters. Stampin' Up! does have a tray that you can use now um, to catch it, um, but coffee filter works as well too. Maybe not as environmentally friendly. Um, and then I'm gonna, so I poured the powder on it. That Vela or that Versamark ink is sticky. So the powder sticks to the ink. And now I'm gonna just take the rest of the powder and put it in here. And I will reuse that coffee filter. I don't, I don't throw it away right away. I reuse it several times. And then I'm gonna bring in my heat tool and there are two settings on the heat tool. You wanna make sure to use the number two. So now I'm gonna turn this on. It's gonna be a little bit noisy. So just be aware, maybe turn down your volume if it's too noisy, um, but I'm gonna turn that on now. Yep. And as you can see, it's floating around because it's a small piece of paper. So I brought in my reverse tweezers and I am just holding the heat gun. Can you see how it's heating up? Holding the heat gun and there you go. See how that heated up and it became nice and um, shiny? That's what you're looking for. So you saw I didn't move it a lot. I just held it there and until it became shiny. And now what I'm gonna do is I don't want all that that powder in there, right? So I'm gonna bring in, I've got a, a towel. Um, I'm kind of waiting to make sure it's good and dry. But that's okay. So I'm gonna bring this in and just wipe off the powder. I'm avoiding the ink right now, but just because I wanna make sure it's good and dry before I go over it. But you can see how that powder is just coming off. 
and it kind of gives you, you could leave it. I mean, it gives you kind of like a little chalk, chalkboard effect, which is kind of pretty too. All right, so now set that aside and then I'm gonna just bring in my trimmer or you can use a pair of scissors if you're gonna do it with scissors. Make sure you have a really kind of a long pair of scissors. You can bring it in and I'm just gonna cut it. I want it to be just rectangular, kind of tight. I'll do those two and then I'm gonna show you a little trick with the trimmer. So here, you know, it's a little tricky kind of knowing, well, where exactly do I want it to be trimmed, right? And then how do you hold it? So one thing you can do is you can bring in a um, post-it note, all right? And this is the sticky side of the post-it note. I'm gonna cut that and I'm gonna adhere my post-it note there so that I can hold it, it's like a, an extra handle, right? So I'm gonna hold it, press it down, put that down, and I'm looking to see that my letters are all lining up on the inside there. There we go. And now I'm gonna do it the opposite way. Turn it, kinda line it up. And I don't know if you noticed, let's see, my letters are all lined up and I started with the, um, the cutting blade to the bottom of my paper. That way it's pushing it up to this ridge here so that I get a nice clean cut. There we go. So another little trick for getting a nice straight cut when you've got such a small, small piece here. All right, let's put it together and be done with all of this, right? Kind of a lot, a lot of little pieces to this, but I thought it was kind of fun to, you know, share some of this, this with you. All right, so one of the things, so this is gonna go on and just go ahead and center it. Um, it's all dry now. And when you're stamping or choosing your, your um, piece, you don't, well, you don't wanna put anything on the right side unless it's intentional because you'll actually see a little bit of this around. So I put the little flower on the left intentionally. And now I'm gonna actually just put this piece on and see how I'm gonna make sure that it fits all the way around. I just want that extra piece of white to frame the fresh freesia. Don't have to do it that way, but it's, um, it's just the way this card was designed. Now there is kind of a front and a back to your paper when it's cut. It's not always evident, but um, but I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna put the back side here. I'm actually gonna do it like this because, yeah, I'm gonna actually do it this way because I'm right-handed. <laughs> and what I'm doing is I'm lining it up so that I can see where I wanna put my adhesive. So it just gives me, I know I don't want that adhesive to come past this mark, right? So now I can just turn it over. And again, once again, card is closed. I'm lining up the right side so that I have some of the, like framing this fresh regia part. And then glue in that there. There we go. So your words are hidden until they until your um recipient opens up the page okay so now you can just put this on your card base i am going to use the foam adhesive sheets uh, for this let's see they're a little hmm, i don't need them to be quite that thick um i'm going to cut one in half let me go ahead and see I like the way it gives me a nice crisp image uh, or a nice crisp um, weight to it. Put that one in there. You can use dimensionals. Dimensionals work just fine. Um, that out of the way. 
This is like a giant sheet of dimensionals. It just doesn't have, it's just not cut into pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that like that. It just gives the card a nice heft. And then this is going to go on top of the Fresh Freesia layer. Make sure you put it on the right way. Don't put it on upside down. And again, I'm centering it. I'm kind of holding it with my fingers, putting my little fingers down to kind of fold, close the card, and then gently lowering it onto that page. All right. And then the last thing we have to do, this is our hello there. And um, I'm not going to put that up on dimensionals because this piece is on dimensionals. So um, I'm just going to put a little adhesive. You certainly could put it on dimensionals. I'm going to just tilt it like that because I'm going to add a bow. Now, where do you see what I'm going to do with this bow? I couldn't decide which color. They both work. And you certainly could use just one or the other, and that would be perfectly fine. But of course, you know, I didn't do that. Um, so I'm gonna take about eight inches, let's see, and I'm gonna cut this in half. So that's about six, seven, eight, so about there. And I'm gonna use my fabric scissors these are, one is Fresh Freesia and the other is the um, um, pa Pale Papaya. And again, those are only gonna be available for a few more months. And then I'm gonna bring these two pieces together and you can see I'm gonna cut it down the middle. And it doesn't have to be super precise. I do like to use my ribbon scissors. I do have a set of scissors that I set aside and I only use for ribbon. If you sew, you know how important it is to have fabric scissors. Um, and ribbon scissors are the same way. Ribbon can be a little finicky. Uh, and if you have any stickiness on your scissors, whoops, don't want to cut that in half. Um, it can be really hard to cut ribbon. Now this ribbon cuts really well, so this is not a big deal. But you can see I'm not really worried about being super, super even because it's not going to matter. And I actually will have two bows out of this piece. All right, there we go. I'll put the other one back in. So for my folks at my in-person card class, somebody's going to ha not have to cut their ribbon. They're going to have it all ready. And I'm going to just take this with the little rabbit ears and tie that into a little bow. There we go. I just thought it was kind of fun to have both colors. And that's it. Let's see if I can separate that a little bit. So you end up with a double bow. There we go, like that. And let me see, so I want to do it that way. Yes, I'll cut that end off a little bit. Where'd my scissors go? Um, let's see, that one's already cut, it's perfect. So let's go ahead and do that one kind of like that. And I like to use a glue dot for the bow. Just feel that it um, holds well. I don't know what I did with my little reverse tweezers. So I'll bring in my take a pick tool and I'm going to just put that on the back of the ribbon and put that right about there. There we go. Hello there. Happy birthday. I hope you like that. I thought it was kind of a fun card and not too difficult. Um, if you don't have the materials that I use, certainly use what you have from your stash. If you'd like to purchase anything um, and you don't have, currently have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to, to be your demonstrator to help you to um, unleash your inner creativity. You can find me, follow me, um, subscribe to my um, uh, YouTube and Facebook pages. Um, I'm at Crafty Hair and Designs on all the socials, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube.
And I do have a website and it's uh, craftyhairanddesigns.stampinup.net. So I look forward to seeing you uh, at a future video. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up or a